Welcome ESA Explores listeners. I'm your host for today, Laura Zermühlen, and in this series, we're meeting the members of ESA's Astronaut Reserve. During the first phase of their Astronaut Reserve training here at the European Astronaut Center in Cologne in Germany, they are mastering key skills in spacecraft systems, robotics, scuba diving, and survival training. Our guest today is John McFall from the UK, a former Paralympic sprinter and trauma and orthopedic surgeon who is now part of ESA's Astronaut Reserve and the FLY project, where he's helping to open up spaceflight to people with disabilities and redefining what's possible for human space exploration. Hi, John. Welcome to the ESA Explores podcast again. Thanks, Laura. Great to be here. Yes, very nice to see you. Last time we spoke, it's already been over a year, I think, yeah. when you just joined the EAC and uh, some astronaut training experiences over here. What have you been up to since? Well, uh, it's been a busy 18 months or so, actually, since uh, June 23. Mm -hmm. So as you know, I was uh, involved in the feasibility study uh, for the FLY project. And in December last year, so December 2024, we officially concluded that part of, uh, of FLY. So the feasibility study was finished. And uh, very reassuringly, we demonstrated f from the report that there is no technical reason why someone with a disability like mine could not fly to space uh, on a long duration mission to the International Space Station. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah, so that's been the bulk of what I've been doing for, for the last 18 months. So yeah, really happy and such a great team effort, you know, loads of people involved in this uh, in this study uh, and delivered some really, really good results. What's really interesting as well, actually, is um, outside of ESA, the impact that what we have done here at ESA has had on uh, international partners um, uh, and other space agencies actually probably admiring very much what, we've, what mm. we've done and the quality of the work that we've done because we've done, done a really good job. So what, what challenges have there been then since then? Or what are the main adaptations or findings from the study, from the first phase of the study? So from the feasibility phase, probably um, the main considerations are that there will have to be some prosthetic hardware adaptation, primarily to meet the requirements of uh, being able to take the prosthetic hardware to space. So for example, um, the hydraulic fluid in one of the knees has to be a different one to what it is off the shelf uh, to meet the meet the safety requirements there are some minor adjustments to the footrest in the spacecraft that we would have to make to accommodate the the difference in foot angle we're still going through the safety certification process and this is forming part of the the mission ready phase as well which is the next phase of the fly initiative um, so that was it's because it's so detailed, the, the, the hardware certification aspect of it, it's so detailed that it takes a long time to do. It's a lot of information. Mm. Um, so working with uh, um, the organization or the company that, that make my prosthetics, a um, company called Otto Bock, a German-based company who are great, uh, working with our independent safety uh, engineers uh, uh, at ESA so that we can gather all this information uh, and present it to the, to the safety review panel. Yeah, you already mentioned, so we reached the first milestone in the study and basically there are no showstoppers to send someone with a physical disability like yours to space. What is next now in this mission ready phase of the study? Yeah, so mission ready is um, looking at getting me into a position that should a long duration flight opportunity become available, that I could potentially be assigned uh, to such a mission. So uh, as I mentioned, part of mission ready is carrying on further with the prosthetic hardware certificate. Uh, another aspect uh, of this is, um, you know, a huge part of uh, flying to the space station or an astronaut's role in the space station is science. We want to do science uh, on the space station to further our understanding of how the space environment affects humans, but also to do science Uh, with a view to improving lives for people back on Earth. So we've put a call out for uh, proposals mm. for scientific experiments and technological demonstrations for a potential mission that I might go on. Um, so uh, and we've had 17 proposals so far. Oh, and we're wow. going through the process yeah. of reviewing uh, those. Yeah. So that's quite an interesting, exciting process. So that should I get assigned to a mission, we're, we're in a position to actually, um, or we're on the front foot to be able to implement any scientific um, experiments. And then the final uh, part of that is actually looking at getting medical certification to fly as well. Yeah. And are there any surprising aspects for you? Something you yeah, didn't expect or there was completely yeah, new or unexpected during these phases? 
I think the, the most surprising thing for me was learning about the hardware certification process and how detailed mm-hmm. it is. Uh, and there are things um, that are so granular uh, and detailed that you never would have considered them um, had I not gone, gone down this process. So that was uh, quite interesting to learn what any piece of hardware has to go through uh, to fly to space, but but what what everything has to go through to fly to space, it's a really interesting, really interesting process. Yeah, and at the same time, you were also continuing a little bit of the astronaut reserve training over here. What was this like? Yeah, this has been great. So the last uh, couple of months, uh, we've been doing a block of uh, reserve training. It's been it's been nice. It's it's um, it's been cool to. Um, be exposed to some of the subjects that uh, you're exposed to when you're doing the basic training mm-hmm. for becoming an astronaut to bring all astronauts up to sort of the same basic level before potentially being assigned to a mission. So we've done um, a very important part of uh, of living and working as astronauts is how people get on with each other and how they communicate and how they work in teams. So human behavior and performance, that's been yeah. a really interesting uh, um, module that we've done. We've done biology. Uh, but sort of space-related biology, which is great. So we've been looking at um, we've been looking at radiation biology. So what are the effects of radiation, both on on the human system, but also other aspects of the of the biological sphere? Yeah. Um, astrobiology, um, and this is looking at the potential uh, existence of uh, proteins and amino acids and life forms. Um, uh, on space, how bacteria and other microorganisms survive in the uh, in the space environment. That's been super interesting, including yeah. doing some practicals uh, on that. So it's been yeah, it's been really good fun. Yeah, it sounds like a very interesting journey because you're continuing the study, but at the same time the training experiences. So the best mix of of everything yeah. new. <laughs> and for me, this is what what I like doing. I like being busy and I like learning yeah. uh, about you know the world around me and and the work I'm going to be doing. Yeah. So what's next for you also? So what's next for me is. Um, Interestingly, coming up in May, we've got a, a little bit of work we're doing to optimize the setup of my running prosthesis. Mm. Um, if I was to, to run on the treadmill on the space station, so running in microgravity. Because that one would be different from the one that you would need during the launch? Or? Exactly, yeah. So like on Earth, I run with a different prosthesis yes. on Earth to, to what I walk around in, in every day. And there are some subtleties about the microgravity environment that affect the behavior of the running prosthesis that we want to learn more about. So um, we're going to be doing some testing. I'm going to be running on a treadmill mm. on a parabolic flight campaign in May, which is going to be really, really interesting to, to understand how the prosthesis really works in that environment and optimize its its yeah. performance. Um, so we have the best idea of what we would need to take uh, to the ISS should, should a mission become available. Um, continuing with the hardware certification, as, as I mentioned, um, and originally actually, uh, EVA was not part of the feasibility study. Mm-hmm. Um, so spacewalking. Spacewalking, yeah. Um, and actually, as we got went through the feasibility study, we we got to a stage where we thought, actually, this is what we have already enveloped is going to be possible to do. Mm. Could mm-hmm. we now consider looking at EVA? So we're also going to be looking uh, more into that over the next uh, few months as well. So that's really interesting. Okay, wow, that sounds like a very interesting journey ahead. And um, until then, or for, just for now, I have some other quick questions for you. So what's one word your friends or family would describe you with? Uh, Wally. Why? <laughs> <laughs> you know what a Wally, does this translate? Wally? Like uh, a bit of an idiot. Uh, oh. Like just uh, maybe because I'm crazy in my ambitions and I've had a bit of a, uh unconventional journey through life. Yeah. But, uh, but sometimes it's just what you need. Yeah, so I'm a bit get... of a Wally sometimes, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the most memorable place you ever traveled to? Mm, do you know what? Uh, after I went to the Paralympics, Uh, in Beijing in Mm. in 2008 when I competed there. I actually traveled after that and I I traveled back to the UK overland uh, by train and stuff. But as part of that journey, I went traveling around China as well. And I went with my sister uh, and one of my sisters and a couple of friends. And we went to a place called the Yellow Mountains in, in the south of China. And it was just the most phenomenal landscape. Um, these very, very steep, uh, granite, uh, um, rock formations very very high up yeah. uh, in the sky with the clouds below you and we we hiked up 
it, I, know, I know this is really not a quick answer question. <laughs> that's but, fine, that's fine. <laughs> we, we, we hiked up uh, uh, during the day and we stayed uh, overnight and we got up at um, four o'clock in the morning to watch the, the sunrise. sunrise. And it was just f- phenomenal. That was that yeah. was a pretty pretty special moment. Just the views were amazing. It was very surreal. Yeah, yeah something that sticks with you also. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. Um, what's the most challenging environment that you've ever worked or been in? I think the most challenging environment I've worked in is definitely medicine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in, in a number of different things, both sort of acutely challenging, maybe in, in very one-off situations, but also chronically challenging, um, heavy workload, uh, lots to learn, lots of responsibility. But also at the same time, I would say it was uh, the most enjoyable a working experience I've had as well. Mm, it comes hand in hand sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I think so. For, I think from my personality, I think it does. Like uh, working hard and getting a lot of rewards, uh, they kind of go together for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a favorite team moment, team bonding moment? Yeah, I do. I think recently actually uh, was when we went did winter survival training in February 2024. So with uh, with the hoppers, um, yeah. it was great. Uh, it was a really nice op- opportunity to spend the time together. Uh, and it was a good, uh, I thought it was a great team bonding moment for me anyway. I can imagine more intense maybe than the training experience you have yeah, here it was, at it was, it was. It was quite intense. Yeah. It was quite concentrated, but all the facilitators yeah. of the of the training as well, yeah encouraged us to focus on this this aspect uh, of it as well. Have you ever done something similar before or not really? <laughs> not uh, quite like this. Um, I worked in Canada f- as a canoe, kayak and mountain bike guide mm-hmm. before. And we did, you know, you used to work in teams and things like this, but not not quite the same sort of uh, environment. But uh, it was it was rewarding and, and, and great to spend, you know, this concentrated period of time with uh, with my colleagues. With colleagues, yeah. And prepares you very well for the rest of your journey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think although in medicine you worked as uh, as part of a team often, Often that team would change. Yeah. Um, whereas I think, say for example, if you're preparing for a, a, a mission, you're working within the same team for actually quite a prolonged mm-hmm. period of time. Um, so slightly, slightly subtle differences there. Yeah. Well, okay. Then I hope uh, all of this exciting journey will continue for you. And I'm very happy to have you here today to speak with me again and maybe see you another time. Then. Yeah, thanks, Laura. <laughs> Great to see you. Thank you. It's been fantastic to hear about all these exciting steps our members of the Astronaut Reserve are taking. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and share it with anyone curious about space. Be sure to follow us and our Astronaut Reserve members on social media and visit isa.int for all the latest on our missions, training and behind the scenes updates. Until next time, stay tuned and keep exploring with ESA Explores.